Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noting. So, in the previous um, Live Noting, I was talking about this, uh, the third interface, um, the the touch bar thing that uh, Apple kind of introduced with their latest MacBook Pro. So, yeah, so we have the <coughs> the idea. So, uh, I want to show another example um, of usage here. Um, I have this setup, uh, so I have the this uh, the timeline, which is gonna be our touch bar uh, on the top, and I have this setup on the animation nodes up here. Basically, what's going on at the moment is if I create a a bunch of objects. We know that um, in Blender, if we have a um, bunch of objects selected. The last one being selected is going to be um, the active kind of objects. And with the active objects, it's uh, usually if you're running a command, um, the last object selected, which is the active objects, can be used to kind of um, link the materials of other objects or um, some other kind of uh, functions in Blender. Basically, the active objects, the it's kind of a uh, special uh, now I made this setup using animation node so basically whenever I toggle whenever I'm dragging the timeline or I'm using the arrow key I'm basically kind of uh, going through the objects you see you see the active object is kind of shifting at the moment yeah so that's uh, something that uh, I think we can use to to kind of uh, um, kind of to explore this 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 idea to, uh, of using the the touch the touch bar or in the, or in this case it's blender just blender timeline I'm just uh, I'm moving the timeline but it's kind of uh, selecting the active and by doing uh, by using something like that we can uh, for example I plug this um, active objects. And then um, let's say I want to scale the objects uh, one, uh, maybe one, two, one. So I set it up in animation nodes like that. And then now, if I'm dragging this one by one, you see how these this five objects kind of uh, getting scaled. Um, let me first explain what's happening um, currently. It start with a script node. This script node will uh, kind of shuffle the. Um, if we have a bunch of objects and we have, we definitely have one object that's uh, active, which is the last object uh, that's selected. Using this um, animation nodes and this uh, script node, um, it's selecting all the objects and then it's gonna use this uh, kind of index, and the index is based on the on the frame number of the timeline and it will shuffle the objects okay so let's say if i have 10 objects and i want to make it small i'll do it again uh, what's happening is once once um we have a bunch of, of, of objects or we have a single object i'll try with a single objects i have a single object selected if i tap the arrow keys i'm gonna do an actions to that object so, for example, um, I'm gonna plug in to this object transform output again. Um, I'm gonna make it really tiny. So, for the selected objects, um, I'm currently selecting it, tapping the arrow. I'll make it small. You know, it's kind of a really really fast way to do this. For if I have three objects and then tap tap tap, see, it's applying it to the selected objects. Kind of. Uh, uh, need I think um, and the actions being applied currently I'm using another uh, another nodes which is just a object transform output you uh, you know it's gonna you can scale you can scale bunch of bunch of objects and uh, let me do that scale it scale all these objects back into one so we can do that real quick now um, but you can also add, uh, do other things like um, for example if you have a Suzanne, okay, this is Suzanne, okay, 
let's say we want to we want to apply the convex hull operations into Suzanne. Uh, in order to do the convex hull, normally you, um, you select the objects and then you switch to edit mode and then you apply the convex convex hull and we get Suzanne back to object mode and there you go, we get Suzanne in a convex hull mode. We can do those um, steps of operations um, using the animation nodes as well. So I'm using another script node, which basically um, for selected objects, run the convex hull and then go back to object mode again. So let's say if I have a um, bunch of objects, I'm um, just Suzanne. Okay, just a bunch of Suzanne. If I wanna say, okay, this, let me plug this into the script first. Okay, for this object, it's just a tap tap. Now Suzanne become a, in there, it's a convex hull kind of form. I can also select this, 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 and then tap the arrow. It goes into a convex hull one by one. Um, of course, uh, we, uh, I think the only thing that I, um, I have to improve is the the way it's currently working. Um, currently, it's just kind of um, selecting a bunch of objects and it doesn't know, with the list I'm currently selecting, it doesn't know if this is the first one. I kind of, uh, a better setup will be um, the active objects. It's gonna be um, uh, applied, the, the comments the commands here will be applied to the select um, currently active kind of um, object in the list, so that will be better. I think I have to modify the script slightly instead of something like this because currently it's just gonna apply into the objects based on the index. So if I'm kind of scrubbing and say so all these objects gonna get uh, applied. This is the comments. This is basically the like a a bunch of commands you you write using Python, and then you apply it to the objects. Um, let's try it on a on a different case. Say you wanna turn this into a wireframe. Apply wireframe. We know that by applying wireframe, it's another command being run. So that's a uh, that's the command. I'm gonna I'm gonna save this real quick before I do anything. File save as this is um animation nodes um let's call it touch bar action zero zero one. So when we run when we create a modifier, that's basically what's uh, being run. Bpy dot ops objects modifier adds okay this um, I can basically copy this um, let's command comments out this guy and then paste it there now if I switch to this guy I can run the command once I can run it twice um, oh yeah be careful um, with the setup currently I, I we never gonna um, we're never gonna check this always. It's a very very dangerous in uh, with wire what we are doing because you might end up um, doing lots of uh, modifier into one object if you if you turn on always. So you you easily get this kind of uh, accidental um, repeat of uh, codes. You never want to do that. Okay, just um, frame change only activate this uh, only activate these actions on the selected objects one time only when the frame is being changed um, a better code will be um, create this run this ops but if it's already up being applied don't run it again so that's uh, another um, another python um, we're not gonna do that today basically what I want to kind of proposing is is a way for for Blender artists, if you want to use like a uh, simple commands and you want to repeat it, you can use this method. Um, let's say don't use the modifier stuff. 
Um, maybe you wanna you wanna delete keyframe maybe. So it was clear clear keyframes. What is command for that? Aha! Uh -huh. This is one of the thing that uh, if you run in Blender and it doesn't it doesn't show up. The assigning modifier and removing modifiers kind of work. So um, let's do that again. I'll show it to you. Instead of uh, wireframe, let's say we wanna apply rebuild. Uh, no, um, remesh modifier. Okay, remesh and gonna be blocked okay remesh and block this two command I'll, I'll copy and then I'll paste it here so this is uh, also a good way to kind of learn Python slowly because you're gonna be using a lot of um, functions that are uh, running in the background normally and you say you want to repeat the same functions because I already copy paste the function in there we simply select the other um, objects and then kind of applying it by tapping it twice. So it's kind of a yeah, that's a just kind of the idea that I was thinking. And Blender has a lot of uh, BPY dot ops kind of commands, and this is also something that I'm still familiar uh, familiarizing myself with. BPY ops. You have all kind of operations. Um, maybe the ones we can use today is the object operations, but there are plenty. It depends on the object as well. Maybe with text um, text operators, you can you can change the the text um, by using commands. Um, let's see what's a replace text with specified text. Maybe maybe we can use this. I haven't tried this. Uh, this is just uh, something that I pick randomly. So BPY ops text replace. Maybe replace the text with hello. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's gonna work. Maybe not. So let's say you have text and hitting. I think this doesn't seem to change it. Maybe it should be in the edit mode. Maybe uh, yes. Object edit toggle. Maybe I need to do that. Delete previous selection. Blah blah blah. Edit mode. Edit mode toggle. Maybe something like that. Okay, um, let's test it. So apparently, still, still didn't work. Maybe objects text replace. Um, maybe that's not what. We want split lines, reload. Um, maybe there is extrude or indent. Or maybe text operator is not what we want. So we want a kind of font or something. Mm, don't worry about that, I guess. Uh, let's try. Maybe let's try brush. Um, image editor, new. Paper color, gray. Um, okay. Um, switch to paint mode. Okay, it's white by default. It's white. Um, can we perhaps change the color of the brush? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe we can we can use a frame to change the color of the brush. Maybe, maybe. Uh, 
let's see, active object. I wonder if we just, you know, plug in the, the color. PPY data brushes. So that's the that's the value. If we change this to ten and let's say brush brush in objects. I'm gonna make changes to this script node uh, instead of doing all these. Gonna delete that, and then the input is gonna be the color. I think it's RGB. Okay, it's a vector. So now we have this RGB, and just put a color input there. Vector. Now let's see if this is working. Okay, yeah, yeah it's uh, it's actually working. Um, let me try combine. Um, let's save this again. Color, combine color. And this is handy, we have RGB, but we're gonna use HSV. Um, okay, we need to kind of separate the color. Mm, separate color HSV. Um, plug that in there. Let's see if this is working for us. So this blue. And you know what? This is always kind of a. I'm a little bit confused here by the output of this guy. Um, debug. Let's debug. So the color is um, one, two, three, four. Can we split it? Mm. So what's the color? Can we use convert? Convert. Let's convert the color into the vector. Maybe that will work. Uh, 0.1.3. 0.1.3. It's not really converting this color into that guy. Oh well, just use random for now. Random vector. And plug in the seed. Uh, plug in the frame number into the seed. And let's see how this is going. Okay, so there. There you go, it's kind of uh, working. Um, the color is a bit dark. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, I can kind of paint using different color that uh, this guy is being generating, kind of generating 
on the fly for us. If I what what happen if I run the playback and then painting? So the stroke is only it's only taking the first one, so we cannot have like a rainbow color. Um, try. Maybe use gradient. Can do it. I'm not gonna use gradient actually. Um, turn off gradient. Paint stroke space spacing okay so spacing also if I am holding the pen it doesn't uh, doesn't really update unless I stop unless I stop uh, maybe drag dots No curve. Airbrush. How about the radius? If we let's try using the radius, copy data path and the radius equal um, kind of float value. Give it a float input here and plug in the frame into the float. Let's see. Tool settings preview. Let me see. People I contact scene. Okay, so that might do the job. Yeah, seems that seems to be working. Um, let's delete this. How is there a button to clear all this? Just create a new image, and see that's me painting with blue color switching to yellow switching and I can make it bigger just kind of using the this timeline thing yeah unfortunately we cannot change color while I'm still holding the brush um, I wonder if there is a um, if there is like a force update with a uh, with this uh, BBY data brushes color maybe there is um, so that when we are doing like a stipple, maybe I can change the color or no actually while brushing I can't seem to be able to uh, I kind of change the, the timeline here but if I play it back Well, I was wrong again. It's, it's apparently working, <laughs> and I can make like a random color, and now it's a uh, kind of switching back to zero zero zero. Mm. Yeah, it's actually apparently working. Very very interesting. Um, let's see if I stop that and turn off the float coming into the brush. Just give it a value twenty. Uh, 
60 pixels. 60 pixels. Mm -hmm. Now um, I'm gonna make another new image. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So now let's uh, run this. Let's hide animation nodes and let's run the, this guy and then oh yeah apparently it's really it's weird because it were it was working for uh, just now it was working um uh, hmm let's get our compositing once again node editor get to this guy again i wonder if we um so that's blue and then uh, Yeah, that seems to work. It's really weird. Um, let's give like a random number. Random pixel number between uh, 20 and 60. Okay. Now for every frame, that's it. It's playing back. It's gonna give like a random size. And now we can have this uh, kind of procedural kind of a paint painting mode. The brass um, radius keeps changing while we are doing that, and let's say the have some jitter and give a rate high rate. Okay, that's a uh, it's kind of nice. Um, input sample tiling tiling x y yeah maybe. see the palette um, use gradient no nope. texture don't worry texture mask airbrush let's try um, space space is the normal right? okay, so with space we uh, it's kind of more interesting so yeah there you go that's um that's another application of this uh, touch bar kind of concept. It's basically like a third in interface. That's um, so when you're working on a screen like this, and you wanna okay, I wanna have a quick method to change the color really quickly. You can use like spread chalk or animation nodes together with this uh, blender um, time um, time slider. Just imagine this this is like your touch bar you know one day it's gonna be a real touch bar but for now this timeline will do the job okay playback and then random color all right hopefully this is a um, this video is useful for you um, let me know your opinion in the in the comment below um, yeah thanks again for tuning in to this video I'll see you in the